This travel tip is about money. I've got a few things to show you, starting off with what it looks like. So this is a 100 yuan note, and uh, all of them have the same picture on the other side, but different pictures on this side. So these are the others, there's a 50, a 20, a 10, a 5, I can't believe I forgot to save a 1 yuan note to show you, and then there's a 5 jiao and a 1 jiao note. So this is where it gets a little bit confusing, um, because there are also coins for the 1 yuan, so there's a 1 yuan note, which I don't have here to show you, and a coin, there's a 5 jiao note, and a coin, and there's a 1 jiao note, and a coin. And uh, yeah, if you're not aware of that, that can be confusing. I know when I was first in China and I got these little notes, I had no clue what they were or what I was supposed to do with them. So uh, these are the different denominations that you're going to see and use. You'll probably use the 100 a lot uh, because it is quite a low value currency. And this is what you're going to get from ATMs. So how do you get your money in China? I suggest the best way is quite simply to use an ATM and they are going to dispense these 100 yuan notes. Um, don't, I wouldn't recommend worrying about traveler's checks or anything like that or bringing a lot of currency with you either. Uh, you'll find, or at least I found, that I got a much better exchange rate from the ATMs in China than I did in my home country. You will be able to use ATM cards and credit cards at some major retailers and hotels and things like that. Uh, but most business will be done in cash. So your main use for cards is going to be getting cash out from ATMs. It is a good idea to bring several different cards though. And that's because I found that sometimes even using ATMs from the same bank at different machines, sometimes they'd take my cards, sometimes they wouldn't, uh, and, but at different cards that they would take, and there seemed to be no rhyme or reason to it. Um, so it's a good idea to have more than one card on you. There's another reason why you might want to carry more than one different card on you, and that is security. Um, apparently there's quite a lot of pickpocketing that goes on in China, particularly around busy tourist areas. Uh, in my trips to China so far, my group has only seen one person uh, trying to pickpocket us, but that's one too many. So I always carry money in three different locations, at least, uh, when I'm out and about. I'll have a wallet, and in here I'll have a small amount of cash uh, that I'll plan on using in the near future and a card, and uh, some kind of ID. I'll then have a document holder with additional ID, and another different card and some more cash. And then this one I feel like is my most secure option. This is a little concealed wallet that you put, uh, this goes around a belt, and then it slips inside your waistband, so it's very close and secure to your body. And in there I'll have additional ID, and uh, uh, cash and another card for getting more cash if I need it. So uh, hopefully if things go bad and there's a problem you get robbed or something like that, at the very worst, well, maybe you lose one uh, source of money, maybe if it's really bad you lose two, but hopefully you at least have one backup somewhere so you're able to take care of your immediate needs. Um, as it happens, I actually lost uh, and I think I lost it, I don't think it was stolen, I think I misplaced uh, this type of wallet uh, on my last trip. But it wasn't a major because I had, I had backup and so really I just lost a little bit of cash. I had to call my bank and cancel the card that was in it, um, but it didn't cause too much problem. There's a few things to be aware of when you're spending your money in China. And one is, is that for most goods, almost everything in fact, you can bargain and it's expected, um, <laughs> or at least I guess they hope you won't, but uh, they factor that into their pricing that you are going to bargain for what it is that you want. Now how much can you get the price on something down? That really depends on what it is that you're buying. Uh, in markets and things like that, 
sometimes you can divide the price by 10 or more and that's the price that you can get it for. Other places you may only be able to get 10 or 20% off which would seem you know maybe more normal to many of us to be able to negotiate in that sort of range. Um, the exception to this is food. Generally uh, the price of food is what it is and that's what you pay. Um, only occasionally will someone uh, try and overcharge you for food. Um, when you're bargaining, uh, it's not as hard as you may think. Uh, even if you can't speak Chinese and the person who's bargaining with you can't speak English, uh, the way they do this is one person will they'll have a calculator and they put their number that they're offering into the calculator and then you put your counter offer back into the calculator back and forth and that's how you come to a uh, agreement on price. Something else you may find confusing is that the money is referred to by different names. Um, names you will commonly hear, hear it referred to as, as, as Yuan or as Kwai or Renminbi. So those three names basically, Renminbi is like saying where the money's from. So it would be like saying US dollar or New Zealand dollar or Australian dollar. You're specifying the country of uh, the currency. Yuan is, I guess you could compare it to saying dollar and Kwai would be like saying buck. So it's a more colloquial term. So you'll hear lots of people talking about prices in Kwai or um, pr prices in Yuan. Um, and every now and then they'll, they'll talk about the prices in other currencies as well. So Kwai and Yuan means the same thing and uh, you'll get used to it as you try shopping in China.